All who are thirsty, come to the water, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the content of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your family, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal Mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the facade of the temple was towards the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around the other gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when, I, when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and he had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more, he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade. For the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river, I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Arab, and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which makes it fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month there shall be fresh fruit, for there shall be water by flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for the Lord, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord of hosts is, our, is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the bank of the dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Now there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to, the, to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem a sheep gate, and a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, with five porticos. In these lay a large number of the ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been there ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. 
Immediately the man became well and took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is a Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning, everyone. You know, um, when I was uh, younger, when I was in grade school, and maybe this probably happened to you as well, um, one of the, the worst things that would happen would be, you know, I'd want to go outside or have a snack or go to the bathroom or whatever, and I would raise my hand and I would say to the teacher, uh, can I go outside and play? And she would say, I don't know, can you? You want to say, may I go outside and play? <laughs> yes, okay, may I go outside and play? She says, yes, yes, you may. Um, and this happened all the time, for years and years. And uh, listen, I, I like good grammar, but um, as a child, this would uh, be disheartening because you would be sometimes too embarrassed to ask a question because you didn't know if you were asking it uh, just right. And sometimes the fear of being corrected was enough to just make you not ask it at all. Um, today, hearing these readings, uh, I think we're reminded that we don't need to be afraid of what question we ask or how we ask it. You see, the three readings from Ezekiel, from the Psalms, from the Gospel, all talk about different forms of healing. We think about the Gospel where Jesus has a, a physical healing of a man who was sick. We think about the Psalm where we have this idea of this spiritual healing, this anxiety, this worry that we can be healed when we're close to our Lord. And we think about in that very long first reading. Um, the temple with the water coming out of the side, it's a reminder and a prefigurement of the cross where water flowed out of our Lord's side. And from there it became not a river but blood and water that gave us sacraments of healing and of life, communion, baptism, confession. And so maybe today we're, we're kind of confused. We don't know what we should ask for. Do, do I need physical healing or you know, will I need it in the future? Will it be two weeks when I need it? Um, do I just need to be calmed of my anxiety, of, of my worry, of my doubt? Um, or am I longing to, to be here at the altar? Am I longing uh, to have my confession heard? What is going on in my heart and what do I need Jesus to do? And how am I going to ask it? Now we have it done in a long form, in a psalm or in a gospel. Three different ways of, of praying, of telling the truth. And today, I, I see the good news as, it's okay. God will give us what we need, how we need it. And we can ask Him however we need to. Even if we don't quite have the words, we just take our time in quiet, in silence, and to speak to Him. Tell Him what's on our hearts. And He, as a good and loving Father, will hear us, will know what we need, truly, sometimes more than we do and will give us everything we need, so we need not be afraid to ask Him. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And today, loving and trusting in God our Father, we call out to Him with our prayers and our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our bishops, and for all of our government leaders, that they be filled with the Holy Spirit as they lead the church and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who are sick and all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for an end of the pandemic and return to normalcy. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for an increase of vocations at the priesthood, religious life, and marriage in the church, especially young men and women of Our Lady of Victory. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers we mention now in the silence of our hearts, 
and for Jamie Malone and Hank Jenin, for whom today's Masses are being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, we offer these prayers and petitions. Answer them with they be in accord with your most holy will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourselves have bestowed, that we may attest to your cares greater. For this are our mortal life and the effect and the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Lift up, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disorder affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks if you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to my roof. But when I say the word of my soul, shall be healed. The Lord is my shepherd, and there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are pastures where he gives me repose. In your wrestle waters, he leads me. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in the times to come. Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.